Hi YouTube, Josh here from the channel ZZZ John Wick, but we're on The Breakfast Club. I'm continuing the topic of anonymity from Sister Danger's video earlier in the week. And I wanted to kind of disagree with her, but first I wanted to cover the terms that she set and, uh, and just kind of concede on those points. But she essentially made the argument that anonymity is, the, is a breach of the social contract. Now her definitions is that necessary anonymity is when a person feels that they must employ anonymity as a shield of protection and that it's usually forced by fear of repercussion. Um, the social contract is the agreement of people to set aside certain rights which are typically the right of violence against others that you might originally have in the normal state of nature and to cede those rights to a governing body. Um, the other definition um, is that she wanted to clarify what she meant by free of coercion and that uh, an agent is freely making the decisions without being comp uh, compelled by some external factor such as deceit, duress, threat um, that would somehow change the decision that they may have made if those factors were not there putting pressure on them. Um, also one of the attributes that she then clarified of being free of coercion is that the decision is made knowledgeably. I think I'm doing the best job of representing those things. If I've misspoken, please correct me, uh, Sister Danger, in the, the comment section. I'm gonna kind of like best state the ones that she did that anonymity is um, a negative thing or a breach of the social contract, um, therefore erosive to a conductive society or a conducive society. So she she argued that showing identity can help with trustworthiness, and that we can or can determine trust trustfulness through factors with that. Also, anonymity hides the ability to verify accuracy. And I don't know if she's talking about journalism, like talking to um, a journalist and anonym anonymously. She also said that necessary anonymity subverts the social contract because it's availing protections while stripping the other person to seek justice for harms while alleviating themselves from accountability. So it allows someone to make accusations uh, whether they're true or not. And if you do so anonymously, you can harm somebody without ability to have redress brought. She also said that it is not a liberator, it is an oppressor if we accept the terms of, of forced anonymity. That's essentially it. Again, if I missed anything or misrepresented anything, please let me know. Also, I asked her in the comment section of her video if she would just define it explicitly for me, and she said anonymity is where the identity is separated from the agent to varying degrees. Now, how I think about anonymity and how I think about the subject is quite different uh, from from where we started. I think a lot of people assume by being somewhere in person that you've given up all anonymity and that's not the case at all. I think that there's actually a lot more information available about you to a stranger online than there would be ever in a face-to-face -face conversation. For example, if you were able to access my Facebook page as a friend, you'd be able to tell who most of my major friends are, my family members, my date of birth possibly, those sorts of things. And also another thing is that on my YouTube channel, you would, if you went through my video list, you would find out a lot more about who I am as a person than you would from several hours of hanging out with me. To the gas station clerk, I'm just another person, totally anonymous. And I also would argue that the natural state of things for as far as privacy and anonymity goes is that anonymity is absolutely a right that I hold in, in nature. Um, you can look at me and, and you would never know if I was in prison or if I was in jail, if I had beaten somebody, if I was a murderer, if I had raped somebody. Those things are absolutely anonymous unless I divulge that information to you. And I'm none of those things. <laughs> But I, I don't think that we cede those things until we start making legal obligations, which we do through many different types of contracts. The bank has a right to know who I am because I'm borrowing money from them. My landlord has a right to know who I am because I'm renting from them. Um, and the government has a right to know who I am because I am using governmental services. And also as, as a citizen, that, that's one of the things that 
I do have to cede it, but I don't have to cede it to to anybody on the internet. The information about me either has to be earned or I have to waive that right. Otherwise, I claim that right. It's like the right to non-incrimination. I have the right to the privacy of, of what I've done. That That's not a right that can be taken from the government. The government has the right to know who I am because in the social contract, I, I agree, I've ceded that. I also agree with Sister Danger that it there are harms that are protected because of anonymity, but I feel like you have to balance those things out with the benefits of it. The benefits that I have from not having to tell anybody who I am is that I have some level of privacy. I think that if I were to remove most of the veil, or even a decent portion of the veil of anonymity, that the repercussions of, of that are too risky. For me, it's about finding a balance between two extremes. If I have no anonymity and ha everybody knows who I am, there's a lot of risk involved. My security levels are low. People who wanted to harm me would be able to harm me if they knew my address, and my name, and my location. And now I'm not saying that that's what Sister Danger's stating that we should have, but um, I feel that, that because neither extreme, the one that she talked about where they're behind true anonymity, there's no ability for redress. And on the other hand, that with anonymity, any nut job could try and harm me or harm anybody. And because of the risks involved, by the standard that was given in her video, there is some sort of coercion there. Um, I don't want people bothering my family. I don't want people bothering me in, in my private life. That's why I hide behind anonymity. And like at work, one of the things that we have is instead of giving out our last name, we give out a, a generic code that's specific to us if they want to complain to our bosses. But it allows me to still have a profile online and people can't go and look up that profile just because they have or had a disagreement with me personally or me as an agent of the employer that I work for. So, I hope that this clarifies my position, that anonymity is both the natural state of things, and that also anonymity is, while it comes with some negatives, it does end up being an, an overall positive. Um, thank you guys for watching.